There is a crisis going on right now inside the US jobs market, and I'm going to tell you why you need to understand this now before it's too late. So the first thing we're going to look at is what's going on, what's happening. The problem awareness will then lead us into why we need to understand it right now in this year, 2023, because things are moving fast. Then we're going to talk about what you, the individual, can do to be the most valuable person inside your team, your department, and potentially your company so that you can make sure that you persist, you thrive, and you prosper. So let's begin right now. The first thing I want to look at is this. You can see the back to work barometer and this is always changing uh, we've seen improvement over where it was earlier in 2020 but essentially 49.7 percent based on the 10 city average occupancy and so you see that half of the people are back to work from where they were in 2020 all right half the people and so this presents itself with a whole bunch of different issues. Number one, we could talk about the fact that there's half of the real estate full. And so that's an issue because you've got a commercial real estate crisis going on. But what else is happening with the jobs? Now, this is something that is multifaceted and I wanna cover a few points from it. The first thing we need to understand is more companies, while they were more hesitant a few years ago, they're now more lenient on how people can work from home. Companies that would have said no way, or maybe it was on this special you know, circumstance, yeah, you can work from home, but you don't work from home, you work at the office, has now changed into a hybrid work schedule. There are changes coming in your work environment that are actively being done in the boardrooms, in these conference rooms, happening at the shareholder level, happening with the board of directors, all of the you know C-class people, they're talking about something that is going to change everything in your business. And that happens in mid-size and the large uh, companies. Of course, if it's a small company, very small company, you know, things happen very differently. But as we see, the big companies may start the trend. The future of jobs. Artificial intelligence is poised to eliminate millions of current jobs and create millions of new ones, they claim anyway. And that brings me to the next aspect of this video. What's happening? Well, what comes next? AI, automation, robotics. These are the things that are truly disruptive. We hear the word disruptive all the time, but actually truly disruptive, already being implemented today. ChatGPT, as it stands right now, is better at studying information and giving an output. And so that could be any, any wide variety of jobs, not just low paying jobs, but of course, higher paying jobs as well. General practitioners, doctors, you go in, you give your symptoms, and they give you antibiotics. That's one example. How often does that happen? Here's my symptoms, doctor. Da, 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 da. Okay. They read your uh, paper. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, yeah. Let me check your blood pressure. Ba, ba, okay. Great. Couldn't that be done by some sort of, uh, you know, combination of a low paid worker to maybe t test your, your blood pressure, write it down, give that to the AI. They also have all of your history, all of your family history, if that was shared and maybe it can come up with a better diagnosis than somebody who's I need to get the next patient, need to get the next patient. The AI can process all of that information. Isn't that interesting, right? What about lawyers? They, you know, ChatGPT passed the bar exam, passed it with flying colors. So we see this, they're passing, ChatGPT can pass everything. And this is just the infancy. This is like the beginning. It's like, it's a toy right now. Also, if you uh, have the paid version, you have the ability to upload documents to it. So you can give it these fat documents, give it that information, and then process based on that. So it's not necessarily based just on data that it was given uh, by its overlords. So this is it. So we've got AI, robotics, automation. Whether you think it's nothing or not, in the boardrooms today, right now, these companies are saying, 
what do we got to do to get rid of these people? What do we got to do? And so that's an issue for a lot of people. That really is. So what can you do as a person, as a worker? How can you make sure that you are maybe not fireproof, but that you are resistant, at least in the first round, the second round, the third round, the fourth round of firing, you're the last person. You want to be in that position. Well, you going to get the best potential for a raise, the best potential for a promotion, and hopefully they're not going to let you go. You decide when you want to leave, right? So let's talk about a few things right now. You want to be the most valuable person on your team. Undeniably, you have to make that very clear that when they look around, this guy right here is untouchable. And that's the way it's got to be. Always say yes. Always. I, I need somebody to do that thing. Yeah, I got it. I need somebody to do it. I got it. Always commit first and then figure out how you're going to be able to. I got 20 things to do. How am I going to do it? Yes, I say yes. If you really, really can't later on, you can always you know, pass it if you have to. But if you'll figure out a way. You will figure out a way. Commit first and then go after and say, oh, how am I going to do this? Okay. Um, you know, with my circumstance, so when I started, I was getting a, a very low salary, at, um, this company that I worked for. So here I am, I'm new, I'm fresh, and I'm getting in first day on the job. And I could see that this was a very disorganized place. And so I thought to myself, okay, no problem. Uh, I'll just read up on all the data that they have and I'll get that and I'll, you know, be able to pick up on my knowledge. I asked for the documentation. They had none, no documentation. So here I am starting day one and I don't know anything. I don't know how to figure this out. I'm in big trouble. So I said, all right, well, I'm going to take matters into my own hands. I quickly became the number one employee, the number one employee in this department. I rose to the top of my department. It was, wasn't even a question. I was promoted at the fastest rate of anybody that they had ever heard of. And that came because I always said yes and a few other factors. And we're going to talk about more of that today. Um, go above and beyond. You've got to add value. Okay. And so what I think as well, you got to do outside work things. So, so sometimes, Hey, let's go get a drink at, at this place. Let's go offer a coffee to this place. You may not want to, you're like, I'm tired. I got to go home. But that rapport that you build with, maybe it's a supervisor and, and a few of the other employees that are still kind of, you know, hanging out here and there. Usually the, the top level management doesn't do that, but sometimes you do get the supervisors and things. Um, if not, just the other employees. You want to know they, you know, they want to feel comfortable around you so that they don't go and backstab you, so that they don't go talk behind your back to the management. You just want to make it very clear that you are doing everything you can to be the best employee. All right. And so you got to go above and beyond, as I say here. I think that is really clear. Like just getting the basics done is not going to get you anywhere. You got to go well above, well above. And that means taking more work than other people. They're going to do the bare minimum. You can't do that. You got to do more. All right. Uh, show that those above your direct report. So you've got a supervisor, let's say there's a manager, there's a directors and VPs and so on. Well, you got to show those, let's just say director, um, you know, what you're doing, but don't disrespect your direct superior. So maybe you just mention one off. Oh yeah. Did you hear about that thing? Yeah. I took care of that. Uh, it's all done. Don't worry about it because you know that the higher level managers are talking to each other. Okay. And so when you mention those things that, Oh, you know, I heard, I heard because they don't know a lot of times these people are in their offices. They don't know they're going to hear it from their you know, person you're directly reporting to. And so sometimes just throwing a few things out there, letting them know in passing in, you know, as you mentioned other things that you're letting them know you're up to something so that when he hears from the, the, your direct superior, he's going to start mentioning it. I like this guy. I like that he's getting stuff done. You might have just, that might be just a regular task, but he thinks that you are getting stuff done and you are, but now you're not only doing so for your direct superior, you're doing it on the one level up. Remember, don't disrespect your direct support ever. Okay. Track all of your KPIs. 
okay, your key performance indicators, even if that's not being done. So it's not a sales position where you would say, okay, how many phone calls did I make? How many did I close? It could be done anywhere. How many boxes did I put on the shelf? Does anybody track that? No. Could you do that? Okay. Why don't we do a little comparison here? I stacked twice as many boxes as this guy over here. You got to do that. This is for your own good, for your family. You need to do these things. Take the extra step. Okay. And um, what I would say is that you can create, you can create new things. So well, just one example was when I first was employed at this place, um, for me, there was no documentation of any kind. And so I said, well, I'm going to create a documentation and I'm going to set this up. Okay, we don't have a process for this. I'm going to create a process. They call that SOP or Standard Operating Procedure. I didn't use that name. I think the jargon is always nonsense. But you got to create those things. And you start implementing that. And so what I saw was direct report and one level up with my folders in their office talking about the circumstance. And so they realized that and said, hey... That's interesting. I like what this guy's doing. It will help you become the most valuable person on your team. Do what you got to do. Go above and beyond. Yes, it takes more work, but you're going to solidify your position. You're going to be the one to get the best raise, the best bonus. And if not, guess what? When it's time to walk, they might be a little bit more hesitant and say, okay, fine, we'll do what you need. Or you're going to use that as a reason to go to the next place, potentially get a better offer, and then your life hopefully will be better. I want your life to be better next year than it is this year. I hope that I've provided some value to you. Hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you're supporting me and I want to help you as best I can. I appreciate you being here today and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.